Light Mandela Robotics. Let's start talking about the uh, RGB LEDs and uh, the uh, dimmer circuit that is number four and five for the breadboarding. We're going to do this in Tinkercad. We're going to do this in, the, uh, in real life with the actual kit. So let's get started. Here we are in Tinkercad. We are going to jump into a random uh, tinkering platform here so we can start playing with this. This is the one I've been using for demos, so no big deal here. We'll make sure that this uh, make sure that this actually has in it what we uh, what we need it to have. I take a moment to load here. Um, also, while we do this, so just so we know, we are going to be going through 1.03 breadboarding, and we're going to go through number four and five. For those of you accessing this on April 22nd, I changed this on April 21st. We modified the parts a little bit. If anybody didn't notice that and got a little confused, I apologize. So we're going to hook up number four, an RGB LED circuit, really simply in Tinkercad right here. So if I zoom in here, and the real life version is going to be slightly different to this one, okay? Um, I've got a bit of a circuit here. I'm just going to make some of my parts kind of go away right now, just because this is a past circuit where we were turning on an LED. Um, and I'm just going to kind of delete all of them and drop in what we need. The first thing we need is an RGB LED. Now you'll notice with the RGB LED, we have a red leg, a blue leg, a green leg, and a cathode. That's our negative side. Uh, in an actual LED, the cathode leg is going to be a different size than the other three. That's how you know which one you're working with. We're going to drop this into our breadboard really simply here. Notice that our breadboard is set up with a 9 volt battery. All the power rails are set up the way they're supposed to. Uh, we're good to go from here. We are going to need a resistor. And now in this one in Tinkercad, I'm going to hook this up specifically. I'm going to show you how to do a push button and then I'm going to hook it up with slide switches because they actually work better than the push button. All right, so let's talk about how these work really quickly. The push button has four legs on it. Terminal 1A and 1B, terminal 2A and 2B. Normally, those legs are connected to themselves. So these two terminals here, we may as well draw them like this, okay? They are normally electrically connected. There we go, uh, as are these. What I've done here by putting this wire onto this particular push button, I have changed exactly nothing about how this push button functions. So those legs are normally electrically connected. Now, the slide switch works a little differently. The slide switch works right now because the switch is on the left hand side. Uh, the common and terminal one are electrically connected. So right now, what I have is something that looks very similar to that, okay? Once I flick this switch, so once I flick this to the other side, like so, I create a situation where now those two leads are electrically connected. But the left lead, lead terminal one here, is not connected anymore. Now the reason I'm showing you a slide switch, even though you don't necessarily have those in your kit, is in Tinkercad, the slide switches work way better because I can only click on one thing at a time. So I can only click on one push button at a time. But what if I want to mix colors? What if I want to make a purple? What if I want to make a teal? That's what this is for. So we're going to hook up the push button first. The very first thing I'm going to do on this board is I am going to hook up my resistor to the cathode. Notice that I've got this on the cathode right here. And I'm going to give the resistor um, a resistance value that is becoming of a 9 volt battery. I'm going to use a 470 because it's my favorite size of resistor. Okay, we're then going to connect the resistor to negative. Make that wire black just because we can. Okay. Now I know that I've got an LED. If I'm not sure it's hooked up right, I can build this modularly. I can build little pieces of it. So let's say I'm not sure it's right. I'm just gonna hook up a wire from positive into the red and just see if electricity flows through it. There you go, got a red LED. Test is good. We can do that in real life too, by the way. If we need to test an LED just to see if something's hooked up the way it's supposed to, we can absolutely make that happen. Now let's hook up the circuit for doing this with three push buttons. I'm just gonna copy and paste these push buttons so that I end up with three of them, okay? And I'm gonna do something really simple because I know I wanna put positive voltage onto the red, blue, or green legs of this LED. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up terminal one from all three of these to five volts. So I'm gonna go straight up five volts from terminal one B on all of these. Now I know that terminal one B is not normally connected to terminal two B. That only happens when the button is pushed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect each of these buttons to one of the legs of the LED. I'm gonna grab the other side. This is green, so I'm just gonna make this wire match and be green. This one I'm gonna change the color just so we can kind of see it, but I'm gonna keep it sort of similar. Uh, and then this last one, I'm gonna connect this leg here to blue down here. Uh, again, I am a sucker for very nice, uh, very nice 90 degree angles here. Um, blue, um, there we go. Uh, all right, so now I've got those. Now when I start my simulation, I should get nothing on the LED, but I can push each of these buttons 
to turn the color, whatever color it is I need to turn it. Now, obviously I can't mix colors, which is the next thing I want to do, because that's actually what we have right there would work for uh, activity number four. Okay, one thing I'm going to do in Tinkercad though, it's a little bit different, is I'm going to integrate, uh, I'm actually going to take these push buttons and I'm just going to make them go away. Okay, I'm actually going to go grab this slide switch and I'm going to do the same thing with the slide switch just to kind of illustrate how, uh, how this would work. Okay, I'm going to delete my five volt wires. I'm just, uh, I'm going to make life easy and I'm actually going to connect, I'm actually going to keep the, uh, I'm going to keep the wires that I already have. Uh, there and there and I should be able to put one there. Now you'll notice what I've done. I've gone terminal 2 has attached to each of these wires. Now all I need to do now is I need to connect the common, the middle piece here, back to 5 volts. Um, and I'm going to do this in a bit of a, I'm going to call this a cheater's way. Okay, I'm going to jump 5 volts down to just a random row here and I'm just going to connect my common over to all of those. Okay, that's going to provide some nice fine electrical connections, nice straight lines. And we're going to start our simulation. Now I got white right now, but as I turn these off, you notice that I actually turn parts of the LED on. That's green, that's blue, that's red. And if I combine them, I can get my nice teal that I wanted, I can get a nice yellow, or I can get a purple. Now, if we use an analog, if we used like a slider on this one, we could absolutely make any color on the, under the sun. It's how we get LED TVs. That's basically how they work. Okay. Now. The next piece, and I'm going to do number five on Tinkercad here first, and then I'm going to do it in real life because it'll look a little bit more confusing in real life. The last part is I wanted you to put a dimmer switch on this one. Now you notice that I already have my resistor in here, so I'm like halfway there. Really all I need to do to put a dimmer on this is to grab my potentiometer, and we know how potentiometers work, so I'm just going to delete my ground, um, my ground wire here, and I'm going to connect my wiper up to my ground wire where it was. Okay. And then I'm really simply just going to run power to my potentiometer. I'm going to run negative there. I'm going to run positive here. Make it the right color and connect them up. And now what I've got is something even better because now the voltage that comes out of this LED has to go back through this resistor, back through the potentiometer, and it's actually going to let me. I'm going to turn it. Oh, oh I know what's happened. Um, I need to actually unhook a part of the potentiometer. Apologize for that. See if we can get this to work now. There, 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 there. Let me just take a look here, make sure I got this right. A couple of those should be on. I just want to confirm I have everything in the correct position it is supposed to be. Uh, let's just try this again and see if I can get something out of it. No, we can't. No, we can't. That's unfortunate. All right, let's troubleshoot this thing here. Um, that's going to work there. That's going to work there. Um, there, 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 that's to negative, that's to negative, those are in the correct row with each other, those are in the correct row with each other. I suspect that this resistor might be too big, and so let's make it smaller and see what happens. Okay. Okay, still got nothing, so I'm going to actually move some parts around and I'm going to see if I can troubleshoot this. Okay, I'm going to grab my potentiometer, I'm just going to remove it from my circuit for right now. I just want to see if this circuit continues to work. If I um, connect the um, connect this back to negative, I suspect it will. Yes, it does. Okay, so I've got something going on in my potentiometer. That does happen sometimes. Okay, so let's go back down here. Let's connect up. Uh, there we go. Let's just try this one more time. I'm going to connect this to positive. I'm going to connect this to negative. Again, keeping my wires nice, consistent color. Now this theoretically should give us a variable amount of resistance. There we go. Okay, I'm not sure where I was wrong in the first one. I'll have to review the video here. But what you guys are going to see from this is that I do get a switch that, or a, a dial that's going to allow me to dim my LED. All right. Uh, now in real life, this is going to be much more apparent. So we'll we'll hook this one up straight to the uh, straight to the real breadboard now. All right. So we've done that in Tinkercad. Let's jump over to my second webcam and let's actually hook this up now. Things that you're going to see from this. I've got my push buttons over here. I'm just going to grab my wires really quickly and throw them in here. Okay, so um, don't need an Arduino for this one. That makes life easy. Okay, I've got my potentiometer here, and again, yours might be blue. I've got my RGB LED, and again, mine is on a little black board. It's easier to see. Yours might just be the LED. They work functionally exactly the same. You just have to make sure that you're putting the cathode wire where you're supposed to. I've also got my three push buttons here as we talked about before. Um, and I've got one resistor here as well. I've got it, it's very very tiny here. Um, 
Got my battery, got my power pack. I'm gonna actually start very quickly by taking my um, my battery or my uh, RGB LED here, and I'm gonna put it. Um, I'm actually gonna put it right near uh, right near the power source. Okay. Um, actually, no, sorry, I take that back. I'm gonna put it down here on the bottom, um, just so that it's a little easier to work with, a little easier to hook up. You can see that it's got three legs on there. Um, I'm gonna take my resistor. I know this is super small, and again, I've cut my resistor. It's got what we can best describe as really little legs on it, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. We just have to make sure that the metal makes contact with metal. I don't like my resistors hanging out on my board as much. So if you have a little pair of cutters, oop, clicked the wrong button there. I apologize. All right, let's hop back here. So I've got my ground pin is my right-hand pin. It's probably not the one you have on your RGB LED, but that's okay. All right. I'm gonna grab that uh, resistor right there, uh, and now I'm gonna hook up my push buttons, okay? I'm gonna make sure I get a nice snug fit on all three of these. All right, and I got, I noticed that when I did this that I have a, I have a leg here that's bent the wrong way, so I'm just gonna bend it back just to make sure that I got a really good, solid push on this one. There we go, okay. Um, now, if I wanna test each piece of this, I actually can do that, okay? It's relatively easy. All we need to do is we need to take an appropriate sized resistor, and I'm just gonna go grab one of those from my kit, and we're actually just gonna test this. Um, I just have to make sure I get a small enough resistor, if we remember our resistor color codes here. Um, Woohoo, all right. I have a, that one is much too large. I'm looking at, um, Orange, orange, black, black, that's correct. So this should be a 330 ohm resistor, 330 ohm resistor, orange, orange, black, black, brown, which is this guy right here, okay? The other one I looked at first, by the way, was a brown, black, black, orange, which should be a 1,000, no, 10,000 ohm resistor. Okay, I'm gonna test each of these power buttons just to make sure that they work. How I'm gonna do that? I'm gonna connect one leg into positive voltage, okay? I'm gonna take a normal LED here, I'm gonna check for the flat side, and I'm gonna run it into the other side of the push button and into that resistor, okay? I'm gonna put my lid on here. I just gotta turn my power on. And what you see there is an LED turns on. That button is working. I'm gonna keep doing this the whole way along just to make sure that each button is making really good contact with my breadboard. This is going, the resistor's going into positive, okay? And the LED is going into negative. Uh, let's use the yellow one here, okay? And you can see right there, I clearly have an LED that functions. Now we go on to the third button, and let's troubleshoot it as well. It's the one that's a bit funky. It, uh, it looks like it's a bit crooked here. So let's just make sure that it turns on when all is said and done. Okay, and I'm getting, getting a whole lot of nothing from it. So I'm just gonna slide my push button down a hair. Um, and I'm just... Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put my push button back here. Some of the breadboards you guys are using might have a split right along the middle here, okay? Um, and so you might wanna keep these in the same kind of quadrant of the breadboard, uh, if at all possible. All right, I'm just gonna go find the flat side of this one again, because that's something we're gonna spend some time doing in this module. There we go. Okay, test it out. I have an LED that works. I know that I have three push buttons that are in a good spot that are ready to go. All right, time to hook this thing up. Now. I know that this LED is connected to negative, so I know that I need to connect these three push buttons to positive in this case. So I'm gonna grab some red wires here, just because I know that they're all gonna to have to go to positive, and I'm gonna connect their legs here, here, and oops, sorry, bump the camera there, and here, and I'm just gonna connect them all straight into the positive power rail here, so that I get a good, nice solid connection, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some other jumper wires and I'm gonna plug them into the other side of these, um, I'm gonna plug them into the other side of these push buttons. I'm actually gonna turn my power off when I do this, which isn't a bad idea for you to do while you're working through something like this. Okay, I'm gonna connect there, I'm gonna connect there. I might have my blue and green wires backwards on this one. Haven't ruled that out. And I'm gonna use orange for the, the third wire just to represent that it should be attached to the red LED if I've uh, aimed the, Slots right, okay, cool. Now, I've got three push buttons, I've got an LED, and I've got everything wired the way it should be, okay? So you can kind of see there, actually that's probably a better angle. Okay, um, now when I turn my board on, I should be able to control and turn the thing blue with that one, okay, green with that one, and uh, red with that one. 
That's not quite as bright as it was yesterday. I may have, uh, no, I got the same resistor in there. That's all good. Okay, and also I can con I can combine these. I can kind of create a teal. I can kind of create a, uh, that one creates a green, and that one creates a purple there. All right, so now the last thing we wanted to do is we actually wanted to create a potentiometer dimmer on this. And this is exactly the same as what we talked about in Tinkercad. I'm actually going to move it. I'm going to put it right over here, okay? Um, I actually just want to check. I want to check if the other side of this breadboard is connected electrically the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to remove one wire. This wire is attached to the yellow push button. And I'm just going to slide it over on the breadboard and see if I still get power. And as you can see, I don't. So I'm just going to slide it over on the breadboard until I see. Okay, it looks like there's a split along the middle of this breadboard. So all I did to change to turn that one on is I went to the other side of the breadboard, okay? So if I want to connect this side of the breadboard to the other side of the breadboard, if I think there's a split between them, and I've just, I've kind of proved it here, so I know there's a split between them, all I have to do is run a jumper wire from here into the other side of the breadboard, okay? I'm going to do this, I'm just going to hop over to Tinkercad quickly and illustrate what I just did there. Uh, there we go. All I did is I realized there was a split partway around along the breadboard, and this doesn't happen in Tinkercad, by the way. Okay, I realized there was a split right here, and so all I did is I took a wire and I ran it between the two spaces there. Okay, and that allows me to connect those things electrically if I am having problems. All right, let's jump over here. Um, we've got a dimmer switch here. This is all good. I'm going to spin it around the other way so you can see the wiring on it a little more easily. Uh, but you can put it on your breadboard any way you want. It's just easier for me to access the actual dial this way. As per what we did before, we are going to connect one half of this wire to negative or to ground. And we're going to do the other half of the wire. Um, oop, clicked the wrong button there. And we're going to click. We're going to attach the other half of the wire to our uh, to our actual LED circuit. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take my resistor out of this LED circuit. Okay, and I'm going to move it just over to my um, to my potentiometer and I'm going to put it in the wiper position, so the middle position. Now we're going to put this LE, this resistor back into place, okay? And now I know that I've got, right now the wiper is connected to the other end of this resistor, okay? And I, what I really want is to still connect the LE, or connect the LED's cathode end, its ground or negative end. I want to connect it to the other end of this resistor. The breadboard makes things like this possible. So I'm going through this wire, through this resistor, into the wiper or middle end of this potentiometer. Now, what I can do from here is I can take the potentiometer and I can really easily just use a couple of wires here, let's use some shorter ones, to connect the outside legs of it back to the power rails on the breadboard. And by the way, I'm I'm suspicious that that split around the middle of the breadboard actually extends the whole way along. So I am going to simply, uh, I'm going to jumper it to the other side as well. Okay. Um, and then we're going to grab this one and this one here. Now what I've created here is the exact same thing as we had in Tinkercad. So just to jump back over to Tinkercad to show you what we have here, this is what we are looking at. Okay. There we go. Okay, we've connected the potentiometer through part of the breadboard, through a resistor, and back into the cathode end of the LED. Likewise, we've taken the potentiometer, and one side we've connected to positive, one side we've connected to negative. It doesn't really matter which way you go, positive to negative. What really matters on this one uh, is with the positive to negative being backwards, we'll just switch if this goes clockwise to, turn, uh, to dim the light or counterclockwise to dim the light. Alrighty, let's test if we actually have something that works here. Power's on, okay. Uh, let's check, I got nothing on the buttons, so let's grab the potentiometer and let's see if we got this right. Okay, so I spin the potentiometer, and now I've got blue, green, red. And now, if I come in from this side and I turn on my blue, which we can see really nicely, you can see that as I turn the potentiometer, I get a dimmer circuit, okay. I can actually turn this on and off, I can brighten it, I can dim it, and we can go from there. I do recommend you keep a resistor in this circuit just so you don't burn your LED out because you only get the one RGB LED in your uh, in your kit. But that's how you do a dimmer circuit. That's how you hook up all of the electronics in real life and in Tinkercad to absolutely make that work.